Hello and welcome. I'm Akash Desai, an assistant professor of medicine and a thoracic medical oncologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And today we're going to be talking about lung cancer updates 2024. This is from a patient's perspective, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to update you on some of the latest um, data and findings from lung cancer and how that has impacted our treatment decision making. I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Aburus, who's here with me as our panelist today. He's uh, from Henry Ford. And uh, Dr. Roos, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you, uh, Akash, for having me. Uh, my name is Fozi Aburus. I'm a thoracic medical oncologist at Henry Ford Health in Detroit, Michigan. Happy to be here. Thank you. So this is sort of our agenda for today. We're going to talk about some key updates in lung cancer, specifically as it relates to you know, some of the data as well as the approvals that have come forward in the year 2024. We're first talking about EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer and what changes have we seen in the stage three as well as stage four setting, both in the first and the second line. We're also going to talk about some update from the ALK fusion positive non-small cell lung cancer standpoint with the lorlatinib data, as well as end our talk with talking about some of the major changes that have occurred in small cell lung cancer management over the past year. So again, um, Dr. Roos, I'm just going to be referring by your first name because we're yes. really good friends and colleagues. <laughs> So uh, let me start with this, Fauzi. I mean, as, as I said, we're going to talk about, you know, this from a patient's perspective. So we're going to be talking about a lot about progression-free survival, overall survival, some of the jargon that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Can you help uh, under, for our patients understand what these mean? Absolutely. I think that's very important. So PFS, or progression-free survival, is basically the duration of time during which the cancer is controlled on a particular treatment. So it's basically from the day the patient starts a treatment until a scan shows a progression or there is a sign of a clinical progression of the cancer. So that's PFS or progression-free survival. OS or overall survival is basically the, dura the duration of which the patient is alive on that particular uh, treatment. So it's again, the, it's usually measured from the day of starting the treatment until the patient, um, until death occurs from the uh, cancer or other causes while the patient's on that treatment. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so I think along with these, we'll also be talking about some of the safety or adverse yes. event profile of these drugs and, and treatment regimens. So let's dive right in. So first up, we have the FLORA2 study that we want to talk about. So this is specifically a study that was designed for patients who were treatment naive, who have been identified to have non-small cell lung cancer, which is mutated with the EGFR gene mutation. This is the study design right here, where essentially this study tested osimertinib or Tegriso, which is currently approved standard of care, and adding chemotherapy onto osimertinib. And the study randomized or had basically two head-to-head -head groups comparing uh, one group with received osimertinib plus chemotherapy, while the other group received osimertinib alone. So, um, Fauzi, what do you think about some of the, you know, efficacy and safety on this on this regimen? So, I think it's an effective regimen. Um, so, adding chemo to osimertinib or Tegreso resulted in a longer progression-free survival, which means that the, the duration of which the cancer was controlled on that regimen was longer than the patient who uh, received osimertinib on, um, uh, on its own. We still do not have any survival data, so we do not know if the patients who received chemo plus OC lived longer than those who received OC monotherapy or OC on their own, but we know for, for, for a fact that the, their cancer was controlled for a longer period of time. In terms of a uh, safety, uh, the safety signal from combining chemo to osimertinib was kind of um, expected. So patients who received a combination of chemo plus osimertinib had more side effects, and it was mainly the chemotherapy side effects. So more um, lower white blood cell counts, lower hemoglobin or red blood cell counts, and lower uh, uh, platelets, in addition to maybe some um, maybe higher like nausea and uh, vomiting. So kind of expected chemotherapy side effects. And in the study and the presentations, patients who are more likely to continue chemotherapy at some point down the line due to these uh, side effects. 
Yes. So I think as we have here, um, you know, there was improvement in progression free survival or, as we mentioned, time to progression of the cancer across different subgroups. And then as uh, as Fauzi described, you know, in terms of the safety uh, here, actually, you can see causally related to osimertinib may be increased by about 10 to 15 percent. But most of the chemotherapy related toxicities were what was additional in this situation. So based on this uh, study and the important results of the PFS, this regimen was approved in February of 2024 uh, for use for first line EGFR mutated non small cell lung cancer. I think it's very important to kind of compare this and also understand the next regimen, which has also been approved in the same setting, which is first line EGFR mutated non small cell lung cancer for patients who haven't had any sort of treatments to start with. What is the starting treatment for EGFR? So this data was presented uh, back, uh, you know, somewhere in ESMO um, last year. But importantly, you know, the uh, this study what they tested was randomizing patients across three groups. I think majority, um, the second and the third group, which is the osimertinib and lizertinib group, was sort of trying to compare the two different uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors or chemo pills. But I think the really the two groups of interest are the amivantamab plus lizertinib uh, versus the osimertinib or tigriso. Amivantamab is an infusion. Uh, which is a, also called a bispecific antibody, sort of uh, antibody with two heads, one targeting the EGFR, the other targeting the MET. And so, um, Fauzi, what do you think about some of the results that came out of this study? So again, um, so similar to the to the to, the, to, to, to Flora two that we just discussed. So in the first, they presented the data from the first and the second group. So mevantamab plus lazertinib versus. Uh, osimertinib and the combination treatment uh, lead, led to the patient's cancer being controlled for a longer period of time. So we have longer progression-free survival compared to osimertinib uh, single agent, which goes along the same, um, you know, uh, the same idea of adding more treatment will result into controlling the cancer for a longer period of time. We still do not have clear overall survival benefits, so we do not know yet if the patients who received amivantamab plus lazertinib lived longer than those who received osimertinib, but we know for a fact that their cancer was controlled for a longer period uh, of time. Now, in terms of um, side effects, there was a higher grade three or more adverse events in the combination group. You know, 75% of those who received amivantamab plus lazertinib had grade three or more side effects compared to 43% in the osimertinib uh, Arm. Usually, patients, when they receive this combination, at least what we saw in our uh, clinics or on trials, patients will have more rash, uh, maybe some more um, uh, diarrhea stomatitis, but mainly, especially in this combination, they also interestingly had higher rate of uh, clots or, uh, or VTEs. So I think it's a very effective uh, regimen, uh, has a little bit concerning side effect uh, profile that we have to keep an eye on while we're getting used to using um, amavantimab. Uh, and I forgot to mention the infusion-related reactions. So avantimab, as you said, Akash, is an, uh, it's an intravenous medication. Uh, as you said, because it's an antibody, it can cause an infusion-related reactions. But we're learning uh, more about it. We're learning how to use it. We're learning how to combat these infusion reactions. And hopefully, the sub-Q or the subcutaneous formulation will be approved uh, uh, will be approved soon. So it's a discussion with between the patient and the provider on what to use in the first line. Now we have very effective three options for the first line, but it has to be uh, a discussion with the, the patient and their oncologist. Absolutely. So I think, as you mentioned, right, um, you know, this combination was also approved recently in this yes. year, August, uh, with, you know, same sort of population, first line EGFR mutated patients, uh, who have uh, EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer. And as you mentioned, I think now we have three options, really. We have osimertinib monotherapy or osimertinib by itself. We have osimertinib plus chemotherapy, which is uh, based on the flora too that we just saw on the previous slide. And we have the amivantamab plus lizertinib. Uh, so I think in clinical practice, at least, you know, I think, you know, sort of there's a consensus that obviously when we see some of the higher risk factors associated, uh, be it tumor burden, CNS metastases, or specific genes which we think confer a higher risk, 
uh, I think you may want to sort of escalate the treatment on flora to uh, or mariposa. But again, I think, uh, you know, it comes with its own sort of set of side effects. And as Fauzi mentioned, this is more of a discussion with your physician on what is the ideal uh, treatment strategy for you. Mm -hmm.